The first time I went to fish salmon was out for a run with my father on the 15th, uh, 15th of July 1965. And we had 28 fish that night. And I remember it as if it was yesterday. Um, and were you night fishing? It was night fishing. It was all night fishing at that stage. Um, in, in our area, the daylight fishing didn't start to probably the early 70s when, when young lads decided we don't have anything to do on a Monday and instead of waiting until Monday night for all the old lads to come, a few of the young lads will go out. So that's right, learn some of my trade of it, daylight. But I, I skippered a boat a few times when, when I was uh, 15 and 16. Um, some, some maybe there were deaths nearby and some of the crew couldn't be there, the skipper, and I had to go out the boat. Once, once actually, it's, it's one of the nights to go out with 28, and I thought my first night out as a skipper with 28, my first night out for a run with 28. And numbers were very important then um, because everyone was trying to keep count. It was a league to see who was going to do the best. And some people worked very hard and got very little, and other people seemed to work, get them easy, but those that got it easy were working with their head, and those that got it hard were sort of, the head was still in learning. So kind of as like it's like the golf that thing. I mean, the more you practice, the better you look at you, you get. So there's, and more confident you got as well. And if you had a good crew, you could take, you know, you could you could uh, figure out what risks you could take. By risk, I mean could you leave the net longer in the water? Could you go out in worse weather and things like that? So that was um, the first time too. A lot of people learned to run their own business. Learned to. Be in charge of a vessel, charge of a crew, charge of an enterprise. Um, first time with some young lads. It's the first time that some young lads would uh, um, maybe find a job for themselves for the summer. Um, and, and that, and I think that's really missing now. That young lads, you know, could learn about that exhaustion. Uh, exhaustion is a great thing. Especially if you've been rewarded for it. But that exhaustion of, of waking up at two o'clock in the morning after only got to bed at half twelve, you know, it's great. It's really tiring, but it's really rewarding when you get back to bed that night again. And uh, you've taken on nature. Hopefully, nature has been good to you and laughed at you and given you something to take home. Um, heritage. I am probably one of the long, well, Probably one of the people that always loved the concept of fishing salmon. It's a local thing. It's a great way of finding people finding their worth when they go to work. Um, but <clears throat> what I, what really annoys me now is that not only have we lost our salmon fishing, we have lost the skills and the knowledge. My young lad would be probably one of the last young lads who fish salmon here, and he'd probably never get a chance to use those skills. And then there will come a stage that there won't be any skills and there won't be anybody to pass on the skills. And I'm hoping that some stage in the future those skills will be required again. Um, I often think of the, the fill in the field. And I think that the guy is standing at the age of the Atlantic, the greatest resource in the world. And yet he's concentrating on trying to make a field on top of rocks. It's taking something from the, from the age, the seaweed, to try to make land, whereas the future is in the opposite direction. And I feel that uh, had we the right people with the right determination and the right priorities, we look to the Atlantic rather than to the rocks. And <clears throat> heritage to me always sounds like something that's over. Let it be iron jumpers, thatching, cutting turf. But fishing should not be over. Fishing should only just be starting to begin in this country. It should not be over. And the future, the future for young people here to, to stay in a rural environment, they're not going to make a living at fishing. But it could be part of their annual income. It could be, you'll hear figures of 1,000 jobs someplace, but 10 jobs, 20 jobs in an area like this maintain a lot of uh, rural infrastructure need, vibrancy, it just keeps it going. Um, salmon fishing also in this area was something that brought people back on holidays. 
they came from far away to come back and they had a paid holiday. They came, they worked, they fished salmon, they danced, they drank, and everything that goes with the summer months. That's all missing now. That's all missing. Um, I think I'm a you. I was always young at doing things. I was always in doing things in my early years. I'm 56 now. And I still feel that I would still love to go fishing salmon. And I think that if I was told I had a terminal illness tomorrow, I would go fishing salmon.